All right, well, check this thing out. I've already got it partially disassembled. So here is the back, and it is a model RS270US. And uh, there's the serial number, RE109812. Don't know if you can make it out there or not. Matsushita Electric Indus Industrial Company Limited, made in Japan with the ISO screw symbol, 11 watts. So the complaint on this thing is that it plays fast. So here's a YouTube copyright free audio tape. And that indeed is playing fast. Let me try to find another tape that has um, possibly some copyright free audio that someone might recognize. Actually copyright audio, not copyright free audio. Yeah, that's definitely a little fast. So I need to figure out what's going on with this thing. Normally, if you got a sleeping belt, it plays a little slow. And that's obviously the end of one of the songs. And there'll be the beginning of another one. Try to get some words here. Fast forward is not very fast. And by the sounds of things, the azimuth is off as well. Just because it started with high frequencies and as the tape aligned itself, it lost high frequencies. Yep, same thing. Probably needs a good cleaning too, if I had to guess. Anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, flip it over. I'll show you the bottom of it. There is the bottom. One single drive belt. It's a little loose, it looks like. Yeah, it's, it does slip quite easily. And it does look like someone's been in here because all the thread lock has been removed. Not much uh, thrust play there. But um, you know what? I'm going to look and see if I can find another belt for it first because it does definitely very loose up here. It should be probably that tight. And it very well may be the original belt that came with the unit also. So, let me see if I can find a replacement belt. One moment. Okay, so this one measures about 12 and a quarter inches to where tension just starts to be applied to the belt. And so I want to find one that's at least 10% smaller. So that would take me down to about 11 inches uh, because it'd be 1.2 inches less would be 10%. So almost exactly 11 inches from 12.2. So let me see if I can find an 11 inch belt. One moment. Well, the closest I can find is going to be about 10.8 inches which is probably gonna be just fine because it will stretch a little bit, but it will give it the necessary tension. So I'm wondering, it's got a couple of belts underneath here too. I'm wondering if we ought to look at, yeah, that one's, that one's really toast too. Although it looks like, eh, it's not too terribly bad tension wise. Yeah, I'm able to just put this one on and give it a try and see what it does. Definitely much, much tighter. And we lost the spring in the process. One moment. I need to review the footage to see where the spring came from. Well, I've got the new belt back on and still playing a little bit fast. Uh, let me get the exposure back to normal there. But anyhow, there it is, still playing fast. I don't know if uh, they can ID that song because it is playing at the wrong speed or not. That will be an interesting test if uh, it comes up with a copyright claim on this song. So we're going to go a little bit further and see if we can figure out why 
the motor is running a little bit fast. Well, I think I see why the uh, azimuth might be off just a little bit. It's got the wrong head in it. It sounds adequate, but as you can see, let me try to find a pointing device. So right there, which you can barely see, that's where the screw is supposed to go. And you can see the thread lock that has been applied around that. Now on this side, it's even worse. So if I put this, let me see if I can put it into the play mode here. And uh, there's supposed to be a slot right there for that screw to go. But as you can see, the head is way too short to actually use the original screw. So somebody just hacked this into it. I gotta talk to the customer about this and see if he wants to try to take care of this the correct way. Uh, I really don't wanna go any further with this thing until I find out, does he want to try to find a replacement head that is the correct size and fits and everything? I may have one. I've got a box of tape heads from literally hundreds of tape recorders that I've torn apart over the last 40 years. So I might actually have something that will work, just needs to be a stereo head. I don't think he's gonna be concerned with recording, mostly just playback. Well, I went and did just a little bit more digging and I think I found a correct head. If I space these at the same plane, you can see that screw lines up almost perfectly. And then I'll be able to put that screw through there to have an azimuth adjustment. This is a newer head. And quite honestly, probably better than the original one that came out of it. I don't think it has more than three and a half minutes of use on it, judging by the face of it right there. I thought I had a brand new head. And I'm not even sure where this came from. Still has the cover on it. The company name over there, if anybody recognizes it, EWE. And even the cover is stamped with that same EWE logo. But to my dismay, when I pulled the cover off, I could see that head has a lot of use on it, a lot of hours. Judging by how it has the groove worn down in it. So this is obviously a used head that I thought was a new head. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw this head in it. I did find a better fitting belt. I do believe this is brand new, old stock. This is an SCX 11.8 from PRB, probably 30 plus years old. Just a hair smaller than the original one. We'll clean that up and get it thrown in as well. We still, however, have to address the speed issue with this thing. It gets even worse as I pop the old head out. Somebody actually trimmed that piece off right there. They cut that piece off. What? Who did this? The soldering's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the best. Now let's try to clean this up and get that head installed. So I was getting ready to go in and throw that new belt on. And I thought to myself, self, let's go ahead and try to lube that motor, at least the upper bushing. So I've got a little screwdriver here in the slot and hopefully it will release peacefully. And yes, so there is a single set screw in this motor pulley that sets it to that shaft. And now we can just go ahead and add just a droplet of fine machine oil. This is from the Zoom Spout Oiler. People always ask what I use. And that is what it is from the Zoom Spout Oiler. Now I'm just gonna lift up and down on this a few times while I rotate to help drive it down into the bushing. Turning it, rotating. And I'm just gonna grab a cotton swab and sop up any excess. I don't want it to run down the shaft. Okay. 
I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and clean the grooves in the pulley as well as in the flywheel right there with acetone and a cotton swab. I've already pre-cleaned the belt with acetone. Haters got to hate. You can't use acetone to clean belts. Well, only 40 plus years. Okay, new belt is on, acetone sealed up. Let's go and flip this thing back over, power it up and see what it wants to do and see if that new head sounds acceptable or not and if we can actually align it. Okay, power on and we'll get our tape. Still a little bit fast. Now, big question, can we align the azimuth of this head and make it sound a bit better? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say right there sounds good. Still a little bit fast. So what I noticed looking at this thing is right back here is the uh, motor control board, the speed control for the motor. And looking up in here, well, I can't really show you that while it's connected. Looking up in here, I do see a couple capacitors. So I'm gonna kill power to this thing and we'll go ahead and zip this board off the heat sink or maybe we'll just zip the whole heat sink off of the chassis. And I do see a couple of yellow or uh, blue capacitors. And I'm sure this thing is full of it because they're made by Matsushita or Panasonic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an ESR check on those two caps and see what they look like. One moment. Okay, I've got the ESR meter precariously balanced here. And let me zero out the leads. And you can see they are 0 0.00. And so this is a 3.3 microfarad capacitor. I see 3.8 ohms. That's not too terribly bad. This is a 1 microfarad. And I do see 44 ohms. That is bad. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and replace that. I'll probably just change both of them because I'm here doing it. But 44 ohms, way too high even for a 1. Maybe six or seven ohms, I'd accept. Maybe 10 ohms at the most. One moment, let me see if I've got these caps in stock. Okay, I did find a couple of caps. This is the 3.3. Gonna do it over here. And it reads 2.5 ohms, better than the original one. This is the one microfarad capacitor. And it reads 5.3 ohms, almost 10 times better than the original one. So let's go ahead and pop those in and we'll see if that corrects the speed. Worst case, there is a pot right there and I do see it has been turned. If you look at the paint, it looks like it's been turned about 20 degrees counterclockwise. Could be the whole problem, but let's go ahead and change those caps real quick first. All right, ESR meter back out, lead zeroed. Let's check these things in circuit now and see what they check like. This was the 3.3. 
Now it reads 1.9 ohms. This was the one and it reads four ohms because they've been heated up. So 10 times better than the original one. Well, let's go ahead and put this board back down and fire it up and see what it wants to do. Power has been applied. Well, it still sounds just a hair fast to me. Well, I'm gonna to have to earball it in because I don't have a 3K test tape that I can find. I misplaced it. I do have the wound flutter meter, but we'll just have to use the old earball. Get this thing as close as we can. One moment. Okay, well, I'll play you just a couple of seconds, but I do believe I have the speed adjusted correctly. So, sounds pretty good on that, and we'll get some copyright free audio right here. And that sounds perfect. So check this out. Let me go ahead and disconnect the RCA cables back here. And then I'm just gonna tip this up and show you the pot. And I believe I have it on manual focus at the moment. There we go, auto. Let me zoom in on it here. Look at that. The paint marks on the pot are almost perfectly lined up at this point and the speed is just perfect. I do think the cap helped just a tiny, tiny bit, but I do believe that somebody had tweaked that speed adjustment ultimately. Well, hopefully the customer will be happy with this. A bit more than anticipated, but this thing should be good for many more years at this point. New belt, new record playhead. I'm going to assume record's going to be fine. I'm not going to test it at this moment, but I don't anticipate any issues with this head. Sounds much, much better than the original one did. And yeah, that's going to be it. Just got to go ahead and uh, put it all back together and get it back to my customer. Well, you're not going to believe this. See that belt down there? Just kind of jiggling around. That's in fast forward with no load whatsoever. If I add a slight load to it, does stall quite easily. And I believe that belt is like some kind of a weird Chinese knockoff belt where it's not really a belt. Okay, well, let's throw a belt on it. Why not, we're here.
Okay, well, it's all back together. Let's go ahead and power it up. And we'll hit the fast forward and rewind and see if it works. Power has been applied, and I believe one of these is fast forward. Uh, much, much better. Not making that clunking sound either. Okay, well, I think we have basically remedied every issue this unit has. It's just time to put it together and give it a final test. Okay, well, there it is, all back together. Man, this thing looks good, and it really sounds good for its age. Can't play too much of that. But check this out. It's got this little door that closes, and then this door closes there. And I know there's audio on here somewhere. There it is. Okay, well that's gonna be it. I think I've almost restored this except for a complete recap. New belts and lubed it, cleaned it. Got a different head that actually might work in this thing. That's gonna be it. The Panasonic, what was this, an RS270? Yes, RS270US. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I do try to respond when I have time. While you're down there, if you could hit that subscribe button and like this video, it does help my channel grow and I really, really appreciate it. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. As of right now, if you want to contact me, please leave me a comment in one of my videos. I do check those periodically, much more often than I have a chance to check emails. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Once again, I really, really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, let me uh, dig a little bit deeper, contact the customer, and we'll go from there. I'm not going to address any more motor issues. I'm going to put the original belt back in this just in case he wants to pick it up totally as is. So hopefully there will be a part two where he will ask to try to find a replacement head and change the belt, work out the motor speed control, and we'll go from there. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Remember, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. As of right now, still, if you want to get in touch with me, just leave me a comment on one of the videos. I try to answer it as fast as I can, but typically it's going to be a week or two. Um, I've started to answer some emails. I'm still way, way, way behind on this stuff, trying to get caught up. Even got a couple things that got sent back. That I need to get back into and figure out what's going on with those. So, once again, thank you for watching. Hopefully there will be a part two. Have a great day. Bye-bye. We still, have, however, take that again. And hopefully this thing will be good. That we lost... One moment. All right, that's gonna be it. The repair on the uh, Panasonic. What the heck was the model number again? RS270 US, RS270 US. Pretty nice looking vintage unit. I can't really tell any dates on this. I can tell you there's no ICs in it. So that kind of dates it at some point. So I'm just gonna go and do a quick clean it on this, and then uh, put it back together and give it back to my customer. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. If you want to contact me, please leave me a message on one of the videos. That's probably the best way to contact me at the moment. You can email me. I'm trying to get caught up, but still weeks, weeks, and months behind on emails. Remember, with your help, 
we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Once again, have a great day. Bye-bye.